Joey on TikTok saw the Momo bit on my TikTok page and asked for a purchasable deck. Well, Joey, here it is. The purpose of this deck is not to be a Voltron deck, but to make copious amounts of treasures, clues, and foods. There are multiple ways to use them, so the more the better. Momo is a 1-1 for one white mana that has flying, and when it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card and create a food token. This is all due to Momo's curiosity and always finding information and food that others might not see. Think of this as a white Ragavan, small creature with very large potential, and if you're not sold on using Momo as a commander because you don't like fake cards, well, swap him for Isamaru, Hound of Konda. The deck will definitely play a bit differently, but it's a close second for a one-drop white commander. Key cards. There are a few key cards that are extremely essential in this deck. So first off, we have Academy Manufacturer. This is just the best card in the deck, I think. By making any one of these tokens, we get one of each instead. That is super key and critical to this deck, and it just it's, it just makes the value so so good. Clark Clan Ironworks or KCI. This is a very broken mana producer and helps us convert our food from Momo into fuel for the deck. Scrap Heap. In the article Saturday School Number 2, link in the description, Rune Horvick answers a question regarding tokens going to the graveyard. In this case, he's talking about creature tokens. Quote, tokens go to the graveyard as regular creature or things and are removed as a state-based effect. When a player gets priority again, they stay in the graveyard long enough to trigger abilities before they are removed. This being said, whenever we sacrifice one of our artifact clues, foods, or treasures, they do indeed head to the graveyard, allowing for a lot of interactions to take place. Scrap Heap is just one of these pieces. You'll see more of that later, so keep that in mind as I go through the rest of this deck. Summoning Station. This is a small creature producer and can really crank out those little pincher creatures. Sacrificing our creatures over and over again to our KCI or other sack outlets makes going wide pretty easy, I'd say. Crucial piece right here. Now with the key cards out of the way, we have some attachables. There are a couple things that are incredible in this deck and allow Momo to survive as long as possible. Spirit Mantle gives Momo plus one plus one and protection from creatures, making it unblockable and able to deal combat damage much easier. Commander's Plate. This gives Momo plus three plus three and protection from all colors except white, making it super duper hard to deal with, again making its combat trigger go off easier. And Helm of the Host. This copies Momo to be able to trigger that ability multiple times and making a bunch of hungry lemurs for the win. Evasion. Again, Momo has to deal combat damage to a player in order to activate, so here are some ways to make dealing that damage easier. Expose Evil. This isn't too crazy of a card, but it helps get around a couple of things by tapping them, as well as the most important thing, creating a clue token. The more tokens we make, the better. Skeleton Key. Momo is only a 1-1 and doesn't get too terribly big from the attachables from before, so not being able to block it with bigger creatures is amazing. Plus, when Skeleton Key is attached, we'll draw a card and then discard a card. Card advantage is great in a white deck. Prowler's Helm, can't be blocked except by walls, is basically unblockable. Not many walls ever get played in my experience, so this is such a great hidden gem. Not saying that no walls are played ever, but you know, it's less likely that you'll run into a wall. Whisper Silk Cloak, and of course this makes Momo completely unblockable, and that combat damage is just going to be super easy to deal with this on. Protection, Momo isn't very big and neither are most of our creatures, so we'll need to protect them as best we can. Swiftfoot Boots, you can't go wrong with the boots. Hexproof and Haste are great on this guy, especially if we can do it really early. Survive the Night. Give Momo Indestructible for a turn and Investigate. A great combo here. Brave the Elements and Sajiri Shelter. These give protection from the color of your choice and Sajiri Shelter acts as an extra land if you need it. Okay, now don't touch me. <laughs> This isn't exactly Voltron deck, but we don't have much defense against creatures, so this section is a must. Norn's Annex and Ghostly Prison. Look, if creatures are unable to attack us, that's a bonus. And just don't touch me, Momo has a lot of food he needs to find. And Bronze Guardian, this helps keep our artifacts and tokens relatively safe from targeted removal. But he's also here to swing in for some massive damage, his power being equal to the number of artifacts we control, and that cannot be overlooked here. Destroy. You can't have a good deck without some answers, and I think these picks are perfect for this deck. Dispatch, Path to Exile, and Swords to Plowshares. These all do about the same thing, exile target creature. Dispatch has a stipulation about having three or more artifacts, but that's so easy to accomplish in Commander that is basically the same as these other two. Humble the Brute. Destroy a creature with power four or greater. Again, there are better kill spells, but this also creates a clue token, helping achieve our ultimate goal. 
Return to Dust and Crush Contraband. These both exile an artifact or enchantment, yeah, or both. You can never be too careful. Settle the wreckage. Since we don't have much defense, this is gonna come in mighty handy. Exile all of someone's attacking creatures. Now, yeah, we, we just can't be left with just our small creatures, so this is just an incredible card here. Slaughter the Strong. The majority of creatures in this deck have less than four power, so we'll be able to save a few with this card. But wiping out all the big stuff is so good for us and getting Momo through our opponent's defenses. Food. This deck is called Momo Smorgasbord, so we definitely needed a food section. Fortifying Provisions. This gives a small toughness buff, but it enters to make food. <laughs> Good and tasty stuff. Late to dinner. Even though you're dead, you can't miss a dinner engagement. So, late for dinner, grab something, probably Momo, from the graveyard directly to the battlefield. Plus, this makes a nice little food token for later. The Underworld Cookbook can also bring something back from the graveyard, but to our hand this time, and it can also make more food by discarding cards. If you have any sort of food deck, this is an automatic add-in. Clues. Remember, the more tokens, the better. So if we can make our clues easily, that makes the deck that much faster. Thraben Inspector. Simple enter the battlefield effect here. Uh, you just investigate as she enters. And I love the art on this card. It's also on the next card, actually. Search the premises. <laughs> See, there she is. Investigating the premises. So whenever we're attacked, we'll make a clue token. Can't beat free value. Thorough investigation, though, is the opposite. So that whenever we attack, We'll make a clue token. Plus, it has the added benefit of venturing into the dungeon whenever we sack a clue token. And dungeons have their own goodies that I won't go over in this video. Bygone Bishop. There are 16 creatures in this deck that cost three or less mana that can help Bygone Bishop investigate. Free clue tokens by casting our creatures ain't bad. Tamio's Journal is a great one in any non-black deck, honestly. On your upkeep, you'll make a clue token and you'll be able to sack five clue tokens and tap it to search your deck for any card into your hand. And you just can't beat that value in this deck, especially with all the clue makers we've already seen. Treasures, white always needs some good ramp effects. Now, these are not all part of the ramp section of the deck, but they may help immensely nonetheless. Gleaming Barrier. This one enters the battlefield to create a treasure. Not bad for two mana, and it acts as a nice blocker. Gold Vein Pick and Prying Blade. Both of these equipment allow a creature, and probably Momo, to create a treasure upon combat damage. Pretty good value if you ask me. Monologue Tax and Smothering Tithe. These two, of course, don't need much introduction. Creating free treasures when opponents do stuff. Just high value cards. Tempting Contract. This is just a cool artifact that potentially makes us three free treasures if our opponent opponents want their own treasures, then this is, you know, in a four player game. Really neat and super helpful in a mono white deck. Plus it gets us even closer to making these next creatures even bigger. Now we're going to attack. These are the best cards for the deck, contingent upon how many artifacts and or enchantments we have. They make for big baddies that help us beat down opponents. Arcbound Ravager and Extruder. Both of these act the same and are very valuable. Free sack outlets for our artifact tokens while also making themselves bigger. And in the case of Extruder, you can make other creatures larger as well. And even though Extruder's mana cost plus its echo cost is kinda high, I think it's worth it for the value it provides. Shambling Suit, like Bronze Guardian, has a power that's equal to the number of artifacts we control. It's also equal to the amount of enchantments we control as well. So this thing will probably get pretty big pretty fast. Dark Steel Juggernaut, the case is the same with this big bad boy. Power and toughness equal to our artifacts, plus it's indestructible. This will just be huge really fast and it's really hard to stop, especially since it has to attack every turn. Card draw. With all the clue tokens we'll have floating around, eh, it'll be pretty easy to draw a card if we need. Plus, Momo draws us cards as well, but here are a few that also draw cards to get even more value. Wall of Omens, Spirited Companion, and Priest of Ancient Lore. All three of these enter the battlefield and draw us a card. Kind of straightforward, but in white, that's eh, what you got. Infiltration Lens and Mask of Memory. Both of these equipments draw us two cards, both in different ways, but they do help a bunch. A little extra bit of card draw, even if we're not dealing massive damage, is always super helpful. Welcoming Vampire. It draws us one card as long as one or more creatures enter under our control. It only activates once per turn, but it does trigger every turn. Uh, but there are also plenty of other cards that are power two or less in the deck, so it'll trigger a fair amount. Mentor of the Meek is kind of the same with creatures with power two or less, but you have to pay one mana for each creature. 
but you can do it as much as you want as long as you have creatures and mana to do so. Archivist of Ogma is the latest and greatest in white card draw. There's probably no other card as good as this in a white commander deck. People are constantly searching for cards in their decks, so a free card draw at instant speed is just so incredible, so don't sleep on this one. Return to me. The biggest concern of this deck is having Momo out to deal damage and create tokens. So here are some things that will help retrieve him from the graveyard if needed. Breath of Life. Not strictly a great card for its price or its sorcery speed, but getting Momo out of our graveyard in white is actually pretty good. There are few effects that do what this does as effectively, so I'll keep Breath of Life in for now, but the other ones in the deck are much better. Cards like Abiding Grace. This is an interesting one that lets us choose one at our end step. So we can gain one life or return a creature card with mana value exactly one from our graveyard to the battlefield. If Momo's not in our graveyard, you know, whatever, we'll just gain some life. But if he's in the graveyard, he'll just come back for free. Nuts value here with so many other combos. Sun Titan, of course, needs to be in the deck because it's by far the best way white has to use the graveyard in my opinion. Entering or attacking lets you bring small things back directly to the battlefield, plus a 6-6 of Vigilance ain't bad. Emiria Shepherd. This angel doesn't see much play, I don't think. Probably because it's 7 mana. But with all the treasures we'll be able to make in this deck, it should be pretty easy to get it out. It has a landfall ability that snags any non-land permanent from our graveyard to our hand. But if the landfall ability was triggered by planes, you put that non-land permanent onto the battlefield instead. And I currently only run planes in the deck, so it'll always trigger like that. Just another amazing card for the win. And last but not least, we have a couple of things that just make for good value in our extras section. Scout's Warning allows us to cast a creature spell as though it had flash, and it draws us an additional card. Anointed Procession doubles the amount of tokens we create, making our deck move even faster. Trading Post gives us the ability to use our extra resources to gain value in four different ways. Smuggler Share keeps us ahead by letting us draw cards and create treasures if any opponent drew two or more cards or if they played two or more lands, and it triggers on every end step, so the implications here are wild. And finally, we have Aetherworks Marvel. You don't need to have a strictly energy counter deck to get value out of this card. Remember the tokens into the graveyard rule from earlier? This triggers off of all of those tokens so it'll make so much energy it hurts. And then just pay six energy to cast a card from the top of our library for free? Man, I love Kaladesh and the whole energy thing, so I, I just want to use it more often, and there's no more perfect place than in this deck. Okay, so if you're wondering where the ramp is, I won't go over the ramp in the deck because ramp is always about the same, and I already made a video about white mana ramp. You can check it out by clicking the tag right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this deck, Joey. Thanks for the suggestion. Make sure you like, comment, and ring that bell button so you don't miss your weekly dose of magic. To support this channel, visit the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. And if you want to support the channel directly, visit patreon.com slash Manfred plus magic. As a patron, you'll have access to the community discord where you can talk with myself and other friends about all things magic. And you'll find even more benefits for each tier, starting at $1 as a copper.